In the first seven years of my career, right after film school, I was a full-time freelancer. So I was shooting, I was editing, and then later I became more of a director of photography towards the end of being a full-time freelancer. And then I started my video production company. But when I was freelancing full-time, the main problem I had at first was I just couldn't figure out how to make enough money. And then I couldn't figure out how to get enough work to get enough money. But once I started to figure that out, some other issues came up that almost no one talks about that completely burnt me out as a freelancer. And it was one of the main reasons, or these are some of the main reasons why I started my video production company to try to solve for some of these problems. So I wanted to create this video to share some of these issues that no one else will talk about. So hopefully if you're freelancing, you could avoid some of the same hurdles. And I think this is relevant to pretty much any freelance business like photographers, but I'm specifically making this for filmmakers and videographers. So the first issue that came up, and it still comes up to this day for a lot of freelancers that I talk to, is this lack of loyalty in the business. Basically, a lot of times you may be booked on a job and a client that you've worked with in the past may call you, but you're booked, right? So you have to hand the job to either someone else or tell them you're not available. So what I would do a lot of times is I would recommend what I would consider a friend to go take that job, thinking next time around that client will just call me. And almost always this worked out. But there were a handful of times, especially in the first few years of doing this, when everybody really was out for themselves in a way. And what would happen is a freelancer that I sent to replace me on a job, thinking I would get the job the next time it comes around, would then tell the client, hey, I could do this job better and faster and cheaper. You should call me next time. They would literally say this to the client, people that are considered my friends. So a few times this happened to me and I didn't even know what's going on. I just thought I lost that client for some reason because I wasn't available. So then I would just really try harder to be available all the time, but it just wouldn't happen. Sometimes you can't do two gigs on the same day, right? Then what I realized was, basically this was what I thought was this freelancer mindset. I don't know if it was those specific people that were just doing this to me, but I see it happen over and over again, where there was no loyalty to the people that will basically giving you a job. You were just always out for yourself, at least the people that I dealt with at that time. So the way I solved this problem is, I basically now only work with the people that I trust, that I know, would not do this to me, right? They wouldn't steal a client from me. If I gave them a client, it was with the understanding that the next time that client calls them, they say, hey, you should call Saj, not me, right? Because I gave them the job. To this day, even with my production company, sometimes another production company, we, you know, we have some partnerships and when they can't do a job because they're booked, they may just hand the job to me. And then guess what? The next time that client called me directly, I said, hey, you should call this production company first. We're not available right now for this job. I will basically hand the job back. They just handed that one job to me, not that entire client. Because this is more a long-term play. I've been doing this for 15 years. I'm not thinking about the next job and the next job. I'm thinking about my entire career. So when you build those relationships, this basically goes away. This is not something that happens, but it happened to me constantly in the first few years. So hopefully you could avoid some of this headache that I had to go through. The next common thing that I've seen happen to people, it happened to me five or six times in the first few years of doing this, is just not getting paid. Like you would do a job, you would send an invoice, and you would just basically get screwed out of getting paid on that invoice. And I used to do a ton of research to figure out, can I take him to small claims court? How can I actually get paid for this invoice? But typically when you know, you're doing a job for $500, $1,000, just as a freelancer, or you just did something for one day, it's really hard. It doesn't make sense to take any legal action. So a lot of times I would just give up, right? You would just email a few times, call, they ignore you, and I would just give up. And I couldn't figure out, am I just working with the wrong type of people, which is probably the case. But in those cases where I wasn't getting paid, basically sometimes I had to give up. In some cases, I was able to solve that. I'm making a dedicated video on some of the things I did to get paid from freelance clients. But what basically solved this problem eventually was when I presented myself as a video production company, right? When I incorporated and really wasn't selling myself as a freelancer, it basically never happened again. 
because when you're a company and everything looks right and there's a contract in place ahead of time, really it's a lot harder for a client to not pay you because now you have some legal actions. Whereas a freelancer, a lot of times we would work without any type of paperwork, right? They call you, you're available, you go do the job, you send the invoice, assuming you get paid. But if this hasn't happened to you, that's great. But in almost everyone's career that I've talked to and I've known in the past 15 years, they do have stories just like this where at some point somebody doesn't pay them and they have no legal recourse and they really don't know what to do to get paid and usually they give up. And probably the thing that burned me out the most is this third issue where basically the world of freelancing is this feast and famine. And what I mean by this is typically, at least in Chicago where I run my video production company and where I've freelanced in the last 15 years or so, Basically, you either in the summertime are so busy. Basically, there were summer months where I was working every single weekday and typically weekends and sometimes really long 12, 14 hour days and I would be completely destroyed. But I would take on every single job because what would happen is in the winter, sometimes I wouldn't work for months at a time, right? Not just weeks at a time. There were some years where sometimes I would like basically get maybe one gig in, in a course of like a month and a half, right? So when that happened, I realized, wait, next summer I better take everything, even though last summer basically broke me. And this, I just couldn't get out of this mode. For seven years, every time winter hit, I thought it was the end of the road. I thought I would have to get a job next year. Basically, from end of November to basically in the middle of March, I would be in full panic. And then things would pick up and then I would work so much that I just didn't want to freelance anymore or be in this line of business. But I knew I had to take every job because of this feast and famine mentality. And the problem I had mostly, and this really kind of went back to the first thing about the lack of loyalty. I just didn't have this trust of being able to hand projects off. So even the few times I would, you know, put a vacation together ahead of time, the vacation would come up. It's the next week. I get a gig. Now financially, it doesn't make sense to go on vacation and lose the gig, right? It's basically double the cost of my vacation now. So we would cancel. And for the longest time, I wouldn't go on vacations. Any vacation I went on was basically a shoot out of town. So this feast and famine is something that really I was never able to solve as a freelancer. I still know freelancers that have, you know, that have been at, in this line of work for 30 years and they still think this way. And really the only way I was able to solve it was... Again, running a video production company because with that video production company, they're not hiring me specifically. They're hiring my company. So if I replace myself on the job, now I could be gone for two weeks and nothing really happens, right? I don't have to be on every single job. In fact, the bigger production companies, the owner of the company really never goes on the job. I like the work. So I like, I like to direct. I like to be the cinematographer on a lot of the projects. So I hire myself into the job, but I, ha I now have full control, right? I'm not a freelancer, so when someone calls me and I'm booked, I could still take on that job because my video production company and someone else I send out could take my place. And I have that core group that I trust that we could take on many projects on the same day even. And issue number four is basically this race to the bottom. I talked to someone that mentored me when I was starting out, and he told me he made the most amount of money in the 80s and 90s. And he's still in the business. So that means it was kind of this decline in how much money he could make every single year since whenever he got his first big client in like 1985. And he has to still continue to work. So what I learned from that lesson is this business in the freelance world is always going to be this race to the bottom, especially nowadays, right? Yes, there is a lot more video content and the need for video content is exponentially growing. But so is the type of people that are going to film school or learning this on their own and then getting into this freelance race basically. And a lot of freelance filmmakers, what I realize is what they think is, if I'm the cheapest, I could win out against other freelancers. And by doing that, it just keeps reducing the rate for basically any type of work in the world of freelancing. With audio guys, I've seen them create these forums online or Facebook groups and basically they communicate this. So in Chicago, this hasn't happened to audio guys where they're fighting for or they're basically reducing the rate for everyone else because they're in communication, right? The, 
more experienced audio guys talk to each other so they don't undercut each other. It's a good community of audio guys that do this. But with pretty much everybody else, they don't do this. Photographers undercut each other. Uh, uh, solo filmmakers, cut each, vide videographers, editors, they're basically undercut, not understanding they could actually keep this industry at a higher level if they don't think this way. Again, what I realized the way I was able to fix this is when I learned sales and marketing and I started promoting myself, even as a freelancer, but really as a well, more of a production company, because almost nobody would do this, right? Most freelance filmmakers are getting projects through word of mouth and referrals and just knowing people, right? They're not really promoting themselves through sales and marketing or social media marketing or paid advertising. So when I learned that, all of a sudden, I wasn't competing with like 95% of people. I was in this group of like 5% that actually took the time to learn sales and marketing. And now we're competing for a whole different set of clients. We're competing at a different price point. So that's sort of how I fix this. And I'm making videos about this type of sales and marketing and exactly how to do this with a video production company. And that's what I wanted to share in this video. And I also have a checklist where I lay down the exact transitional step-by-step -step guide. Basically how I went from a freelancer that had lots of these problems to a video production company that solved some of these problems. Now, some problems are persistent and I still have to deal with new problems with a video production company, but it's far better than the stressful seven years I went through when I was just freelancing. Right now, I have a lot more options with how I could make videos for a living. So make sure you download that. And if you're waiting on my course on this topic, it's coming out in April of 2022. So it's almost complete. And again, if you're in that email list, you will be notified the week of the launch. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.